Hello, I'm Dr. Roy Fleischman at the Metroplex Clinical Research Center and the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. Published reports suggest that patients with rheumatoid arthritis experience a diminished clinical response to treatment with biologic disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, otherwise known as biologic DMARDs, if they have had a previous inadequate response to biologic DMARDs. I'm going to refer to these patients as biologic DMARD incomplete responder patients or DMARD IR patients. It's important that new therapies for rheumatoid arthritis demonstrate adequate efficacy and safety in populations with prior exposure to various treatments to reflect the variability seen in clinical practice. Tofacitinib is an oral Janus kinase inhibitor for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. We conducted an analysis of pooled tofacitinib data to evaluate efficacy and safety in patients who had an inadequate response to conventional synthetic DMARDs and who were naive to biologic treatment. The same analysis was performed for biologic DMARD incomplete responder patients. For efficacy outcomes, data from 3,517 patients randomized to tofacitinib 5 or 10 milligrams twice daily or placebo were pooled across four phase two and five phase three studies. For safety outcomes, we pooled data for the five phase three studies. Baseline demographics and disease characteristics across the subpopulations were generally similar for tofacitinib versus placebo. Greater proportions of biologic DMIT IR patients were white, had a higher BMI, and were from the United States compared with biologic DMARD naive patients. Greater proportions of biologic DMARD naive patients were from Latin America or other countries outside North America and Europe compared with biologic DMARD IR patients. Higher proportions of biologic DMARD naive patients were rheumatoid factor positive and had previously taken conventional synthetic DMARDs other than methotrexate compared with biologic DMARD IR patients. Biologic DMARD IR patients had a longer disease duration and slightly greater mean disease activity at baseline compared with biologic DMARD naive patients. As demonstrated by this figure showing the percentage of patients achieving at least 20% improvement in American College of Rheumatology response criteria at month three in both subpopulations, tofacitinib produced significantly greater clinical responses versus placebo. At three and six months, the numerically greatest clinical responses in both subpopulations were generally achieved with 10 milligrams twice daily dose. For both tofacitinib doses, the responses achieved at three and six months were generally numerically greater among biologic DMARD naive patients than for biologic DMARD IR patients. Incident rates of safety events of special interest were generally similar between tofacitinib doses and between subpopulations. However, some numerical differences were observed. Incident rates were higher for both tofacitinib doses versus placebo for serious infections, herpes zosters, and malignancies, excluding non-melanoma skin cancer. Biologic DMOD IR patients had higher incidence rates for discontinuations due to adverse events herpes zosters, and malignancies, excluding non-melanoma skin cancer, compared with biologic DMARD naive patients. Despite these numerical differences, 95% confident intervals were overlapping. These pooled tofacitinib study data provide a large data set with which to analyze subpopulations. Nevertheless, limitations should be recognized. Pooling data from studies with different designs and methodology may result in a heterogeneous patient population, making it difficult to detect differences. Furthermore, as patients receiving placebo in phase three studies did so for only a short time, the placebo group had fewer patients and less exposure than the tofacitinib groups, resulting in sample size differences for the comparisons at month three. Additionally, the number of patients in the biologic DMOD IR group was substantially smaller than the biologic DMARD naive group. The studies included here were also not designed to compare subpopulations with different prior exposures to biologic DMARDs, and patients were not randomized according to this stratification. Finally, in these retrospective analyses, no formal statistical tests 
between populations were performed and conclusions are based on descriptive analysis only. In summary, the results of this retrospective analysis of pooled data demonstrate that tofacinib was effective in reducing the signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis when used before or after biologic demorids. Both doses of tofacinib produced numerically greater efficacy responses in biologic demorid naive patients than in those with an inadequate response to a prior biologic demorid. The safety profile associated with tofacinib appeared to be similar between the subpopulations, although numerical differences were observed for some adverse events of special interest. I would like to thank my co-authors, the patients, and investigators involved in the conduct of these clinical trials. I also thank the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases for the opportunity to present these results.